Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewatch Recaps. I'm so glad you're here. Today we have lots to talk about. Yes, this picture is staring into your soul, in case you were wondering. You guys, there is a new article out and it brings up such an, just a, an interesting point of a, just something I want to talk about. Is that ambiguous enough? I think so. All right. Uh, something I want to talk about, and it's really bugging me. But first, speaking of bugging me, again, this picture, I've used it before, but damn, looking at it again. Now, when digging, I found this picture. I don't think I've seen, maybe I've seen this one. I don't think I've seen this one. Whew. Okay. Uh, I'm not t even talking about looks. I'm talking about what in the zombie mugshot is going on. All right. That's not what I want to talk about. Well, I do want to talk about it, but it's not it. All right, so an article came out and it references Neil Sean. Now, I know a lot of you are fans. I'm a fan of Neil Sean, and I like that they referenced him in the article. I tend to like the stuff he puts out. I don't find him to be one that over-exaggerates things, so I I like what he has to say, and I, li I like his positive personality, and I love that he films around London. I think that's so cool. All right, let's get into this article, and I'll tell you why it's just weighing so heavily on me. But first, I do want to tell you Tuesday is Catherine, Princess of Wales' birthday. Happy almost birthday, Catherine. Uh, it's Tuesday the 9th, so I will be doing a blackout day that day. What do I mean? No, Harry and Meghan. I have a lovely tribute ready to go talking about Catherine, Princess of Wales. I'm very excited about it. It's a longer episode. It's another kind of compilation, but I also talk about just all the things I love about Catherine. I'm excited for you to see it. So that's coming Tuesday. I know Dumb and Dumberton are going to do things leading up to this birthday because it's what they do, her especially. Anything to try to ruin Catherine's good time. We're not going to let that happen. So I won't be talking about them on Tuesday. If they do something dumb Monday, I'll talk about it then or on Wednesday, but not Tuesday. Tuesday is all about our beautiful Catherine. Happy almost birthday, Catherine. All right, let's get into this video. While we talk about this and the gall of these two <laughs> demanding things out of the royal family. Notice the background photos for this one. I gathered different photos of them being a-holes. Now we know they've been a-holes, of course, since they left. That's, I mean, hello, it's every day. But I specifically gathered photos mostly from the time with the royal family. So just pay attention to their awful behavior, like this photo here. Charles has to remind them about protocol and walking in order because, I mean, it's just, oh my God, you have to explain things to Harry and Megan's just going to do what she wants to do. So <laughs> anyway, it's just things like this. Keep these actions in mind. They, they seem small and insignificant, except for they're not. Keep these in mind while we talk about what we're about to talk about. This comes out of the New York Post and it says, Meghan Markle wants answers from King Charles over different rules for her, Harry, after ditching royal life. You guys, if you could see the steam coming out of my ears, I don't know why this is hitting me so hard, but it is. I think because this is one of a thousand of this type of article I've seen, and it's my opinion that her, that they are putting out these things Okay, here's what I really think is going on. I think they have no other options here in America. I think they have failed miserably. And if WME, I'm saying if, because I've heard a lot of opinions on both sides, if WME hasn't dropped her already, I think they're going to. So they're out of options. What else do they have? So it wouldn't shock me if they tried to go back to the royal family. Now, I don't think she would ever do it because she won't curtsy to Catherine and she would never follow any kind of packing order. It would just, no, it would be miserable. And I don't think they should be welcome back. I think they did too many terrible things. It's too far gone. I don't think they should. So don't misunderstand me that I'm saying it's a good idea. It's a terrible idea. But I truly think they have done every awful thing, <laughs> not only to both families, his and hers, they have ruined any opportunity they had in America honestly don't know what other options they have. So it wouldn't surprise me if they tried some BS like this. So that's why I tend to believe these articles saying they demand an apology. They expect a meeting with King Charles because 
even if they pretend to apologize, and again, under, go with me on this journey, understand what I'm saying. I don't think they should be welcomed back. But let's pretend like for a second, they're like, oh God, I guess we should apologize. You can't trust them. It doesn't mean anything. Their words are empty and hollow and full of lies. So they should not be welcomed back. But I do, <laughs> I really think when I think about this, I think Harry wants to go back because he might realize, oh shit, we don't have any other options. I think she's so full of herself. She thinks that they will be rock stars no matter what they do. Just hello, completely narcissistic, right? And I don't think she'd ever listen to Harry about anything. I mean, she didn't the whole time they were in the royal family. Why would she listen to him now? I mean, we've seen it. Hello. That's a whole other video. Anyway, Let's play devil's advocate, though, and pretend like he wants to go back, because that's what I assume, and she doesn't, but she makes this deal like, well, if we're going back, they owe us an apology. That's where I think this stuff is coming from. It's further way for her to play victim and her thinking that she'll, I don't know, win people over with this continued victim narrative and that the that <laughs> she's important enough that she can demand things out of the king and I mean just the call and um and what have a chance to explain why they're owed an apology it's as ludicrous as they are but that's what makes me think that there might be some truth to this Okay, so it says Meghan Markle is reportedly demanding answers. The fact that she could tr think that she could demand anything. Okay, demanding answers from King Charles about why she and Prince Harry have been subjected to a different set of rules when the, uh, than the rest of the royal family, according to an expert. So they cite Neil Sean. Again, I'm a fan of Neil's, and apparently he did a YouTube video where he believes this is the case, that Meghan Markle wants some answers from His Majesty the King. The fact that they think they can demand anything, the idea that they called, again, the royal family, the worst names, some of the worst names that you could call people, that they have completely tried to hurt Catherine, Princess of Wales, every way that they can, especially Meghan, trying to hurt Catherine every way that she can to the point of, I mean, I keep hearing that single white female, but I can't think of how else to explain it. I mean, it is a scary level of obsession she has with Catherine, Princess of Wales. I, I, I continue to be astonished by it. I thought I had heard it all, seen it all, and then Endgame happened. It's like, whoa, here in print, all the ways she has continued to torment Catherine, Princess of Wales. I could go on and on about this. We know. But I'm just saying the fact that they can do all of that on top of everything else and go after her late majesty, the queen. It's unforgivable. It's unbelievable. And again, therein lies Harry and Meghan. That just describes them to a T. But continues that she tried to set up a meeting with him. She sent him a letter and wanted a one-on-one -on -one to explain exactly the problems she's encountered ever since becoming a, a member of the royal family. Again, the nerve, the temerity on these two, on both of them. I'm. It's easy just to talk about her, but it's him too. It, I mean... I don't know why I continue to be surprised, but it is shocking. It really is. I've just never seen anything like it. Therein lies why I am completely fixated on this whole situation. They burned every single bridge. They poured gasoline on this fire. I mean, just every horrible name, every horrible action that they could do, both before they left and especially since, and yet they have... Again, I go back to this, the gall, the temerity, the nerve to say they're demanding a meeting with the king. You know what? I wish King Charles would photograph, <laughs> go with me on this, his, his himself giving, <laughs> I was trying to say, I wish he'd photocopy his middle finger up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and just mail that to Harry and Meghan. Oh, I feel like I might have had a stroke. Um, <laughs> could sign it, Heart King Paw, 
And yes, this is ludicrous what I'm saying, but but what they're saying is even more ludicrous. Who do they think they are? They have no skills, no talents. They bring nothing to the table. <laughs> they're horrible people. They've been shown to not be trustworthy on anything. They lie about everything. Why in the world would the royal family ever want to include them in things again? I understand that maybe there's a point where you could be civil, but I'm sorry, not to these two because you can't trust them. All right. So Sean claims this week that the, okay, I have to laugh at this part. Do you ever notice when articles like this talk about Megan? <laughs> they call her the suits alum. That really makes me laugh. I mean, it's the same thing as saying the soap alum, right? It's, it's so far gone and such a blip, but that's literally all they can cling to. So the Suits alum, again, how many years has she been off the show? And that's what we're clinging to. Okay. The Suits alum is furious. I'm sure she is. She's When is she not furious? I just assume she's operating at furious all the time. That she and Harry get scrutinized for taking in interviews and publicized projects. Uh, hello? That's not what people are pissed about. It's not interviews per se or publicized projects if you were doing nice things or things to help people or I don't know not constantly bashing both families then yeah people would probably be a little less I don't know um harsh I don't they they're getting everything they deserve is what I'm trying to say uh, but it goes on to say, while other members of the royal family, such as Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York, received no backlash for doing the same. And again, I say not the same thing. I don't recall Fergie going on and calling them all a bunch of ist words, do you? I don't think Fergie went on and talked shit about King Charles and called Queen Camilla the wicked stepmother. And I don't think she has an obsession with Catherine, Princess of Wales. So <laughs> I think it's a little different. I mean, here I am trying to make sense of things that don't make sense. Doesn't this contradict everything they've said about, I don't know, why they want to leave royal life and step down and it's hard to keep, it's hard to keep the bullshit straight. Let's keep going. The thing that really riles Megan, everything, is Harry. No, is that Fergie pops up on things like ITV daytime show this morning, loose women and billing herself as Duchess of York. Again, Okay, they have done all these interviews and done a terrible job, hence nobody wants to touch them. You know, I mean, like, there's speculation now as to whether or not management had dropped her. That's how badly they're doing at everything. And yet they're comparing themselves to Fergie. And and listen, I'm not the biggest fan of Fergie. She's fine. I, I really... I really can't care about her either way. So, you know, I, I'm aware of what... Um, you know, that selling access, whatever, 20 years ago, I'm also aware that she was pretty, I don't know, it seems like she was, she went away for a long time and she seems pretty loyal since then. I know she's taking care of the corgis and stuff. So, you know, that makes me like her. But all that said, it's just not the same thing. It's, it's comparing apples and oranges. This is what they do. They have to be victims. They could never admit, hey, we're the assholes here. They just have to make it about someone else. They try to pick someone else and say, well, that person's worse than us. Well, that's not really saying much. And I'm not saying Fergie's worse, but you know, you get the idea. I just looked up and noticed this picture. All right, let me refresh your memory about this. Her wedding day, their wedding day, uh, slaps this footman's hand away when he's trying to help her out of the car. Yes, we've been over it a lot. The reason I bring this up is because one, I just saw this photo and two, this is a great example. This is when they were supposedly, I don't believe it, but supposedly, happy with the royal family. This is them playing nice. Do you see what I mean? They can't not be a-holes at every step, at every turn. That's what they do. They are never to be trusted. Think about the bullying allegations. Again, that's when they were members of royal family. They're doing shit like that, allegedly. So <laughs> we have all these accounts of awful behavior, and this is when they were supposedly happy. Now, side note, of course, I believe this was planned all along from Megan. We've talked about that too. But you get what I'm saying. Meghan and Harry seemingly don't understand why it's a different rule for her. Again, I wish King Charles would just mail a picture, a photocopied picture of his middle finger. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'll be honest. I did that once. <laughs> 
was a joke. I did it to a coworker one time. We had a photocopier and we were bored. So I don't know. She took my Diet Coke or something. So I photocopied my middle finger and she stuck it up on her whatever cubicle wall. So that happened. That's a thing. So, you know, King Charles should take my advice on this one. It might work. All right. So since their move, the pair have detailed their struggles. I don't need to read all that. All right. Let's go on to the bottom here. Still, the Sussexes may make a return to the royal fold. Okay. Again, I want to reiterate, I don't think this would ever happen. I don't think they should ever be welcomed back, Harry included. Clearly haven't learned anything. They're horrible to Her Majesty the late Queen. I, I could go on and on. The, the, the way that they treat Catherine actually disgusts me. So no, they should not be welcomed back. They, <laughs> the fact that they think they could go back tells me they haven't learned anything. So this person speculates that if they did go back, they'd have to physically live in England. And I'm saying no fucking way would Megan do that. She would never curtsy to Catherine. And honestly, I don't... (laughs) So many reasons. I I keep going over this. But truly, they should not be welcome back. They're awful people. And I I don't think it's fair to William and Catherine. I think... I think Catherine has had to put up so much with so much from Megan, especially and Harry, but Megan, especially. And look, she's beloved and she's becoming even more beloved if that's even possible. But she is. Look at the opinion of her, the public polls, all that stuff. It's just continues to go up because she's a wonderful person. But anyway, um, I just don't think it's fair. They, they should not be given another opportunity. You don't overcome that kind of, Um, hatred toward another person, meaning the way that Megan treats Catherine, you don't overcome that. Uh, You don't get better from that. And um, I just don't, I don't think it's fair to William and Catherine, especially. There's so many people it wouldn't be right for, but especially for them. And the article concludes by saying, I don't think she could come back if she wants an apology, if she wants the royal family to completely change. They just can't do it. I just don't think they will. I don't think they should or sh- <laughs> Again, the tone of this article pisses me off at the end. This is where, th- this is what they do. It almost somehow implies that perhaps the royal family should change. You know what? Piss off with that. The royal family are doing just fine. They don't need Meghan Markle to tell them anything. Clearly, every, same with Harry, everything they touch turns to shit. So they have no skills. What could they possibly bring to the table in terms of, I don't know, modernizing anything or changing anything? They can't even get their own shit together. They're just walking around in parking lots selling stickers. Oh, I'm feisty and fired up in this one. I just keep thinking about it. Just the the nerve of these two to act like this after they're the ones that caused all this awfulness. And I keep, I don't know about you guys, but I keep thinking about Her Majesty the Late Queen and how... Everything she was going through with her health and just all the stress and the pressure she was dealing with and losing her husband, and then she had to put up with this bullshit. I just, mm, mm -mm. I will never forget. I will never forgive. They're awful people, and they'll never change. So I hope they enjoy the hell of their own making. I just hope they find somewhere else to do it. (laughs) Oh, God. Anyway, guys. (laughs) I had some opinions on this one. I'm back. I'm glad to be back. No, um, I did. I had some opinions on this one. I'm glad to share them all with you. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you know how much I appreciate you, how much you mean to me. And I can't wait to bring you more stuff like this because I certainly get fired. I just, I believe so strongly in this stuff in terms of how they've really hurt, you know, Her Majesty the Late Queen and then Catherine, Princess of Wales, William, you know, King Charles, all of them, to, even Sophie, you know, to act like this and then to, to put out things like, I demand a meeting with King Charles. I expect an apology. You know what? Piss off. You can wait for your apology. How about that? While well, you wait for the photocopied picture of his hand in the mail. Anyway, oh boy, I might be delirious. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I want you to know how much it means to me. Looking forward to celebrating Catherine, Princess of Wales' birthday. I'm waiting to see what these two do or pull to try to get attention. I'm sure it'll be absolutely ridiculous. Um, Again, I'm blacking out on Tuesday, but you know, I'll talk about it Monday and Wednesday. All right. 
What else? Oh, Jay has a new video up. He is Dr. Bad Vibes Speaks here on YouTube. He has a Die Hard video. If you have even a passing interest in Die Hard, even if you don't, watch this video. This is one of my favorites that he's ever done. He does such a good job. It's like an eight minute video where he recaps it, but also tells some behind the scenes stuff and kind of makes it hilarious. I know I'm biased, but I'm really proud of him for this one. So do check it out. I truly want to thank you all for your support, for your kind words. A lot of you are loving those mega compilations I've been putting up. Thank you so much for that. I have so many of you saying you watched all the way to the end. That's incredible. I can't tell you how much that means to me. Um, of course we have the merch, check it out. We have not bloody likely make it make sense. Recollections may vary. We have all this stuff. So check that out. There's a link in the comments. There's always a link, uh, in the video itself, I believe. Let's see what else. And then check out Patreon, patreon.com slash real housewives recaps. That's where you can become an executive producer, like the geese and ganders on your screen. And that's where I drop, I don't know, bonus information, lots of extra deep dives, lots of Lots of stuff going on over there. So check that out. Patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps. I truly hope you had the best day. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll bring you lots more stuff like this. Take care. Bye-bye.